Todd's Tabletop Hoops. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Rod's Tabletop Hoops. This special edition is going to be started off with a look at some of the old Basketball Digest issues. If you were a fan of the NBA back in the 1970s, 1980s, 1990s, there was a magazine that was very compact and very full of statistics, photos, and feature stories on the league's stars. This one is from 1975, 19 November. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, how he's, you know, going to rock the NBA, of course, again in 1976, which he did not do. He went to the Lakers, and uh, the Lakers did not make the playoffs that year. It was probably one of Kareem's most disappointing seasons following a, a good run with the Milwaukee Bucks. But anyway, Basketball Digest was just... Such a, a bundle of fun stuff for the basketball fan. We didn't have the internet back then. We didn't have the resources that we have now. So this uh, magazine would include stars like, you know, Dr. J. He's pretty good. But you could have the NBA and the ABA always battling for supremacy by this time in 70, 1975, uh, 1976. These, uh, the league was at its peak at, as far as talent, but it was also on its way out as far as finances. So the NBA absorbed the ABA eventually. But uh, you can look at stars. Julius Irving recalling his game he'll never forget, and it was not with the Nets. It was with Virginia Squires. So, I mean, what did Dr. J do in his favorite uh, NBA game of all time. It looks like he, there's his stats. Usually they have, oh yeah, he scored 53 points on 21 of 28 shooting in a playoff contest. So anyway, that's just one of the many issues of the league. As you can see by the covers out here, uh, this is most of my 1980s and a few uh, 1970s issues. Some of these issues I didn't even collect. They don't have my name on them. My folks were always garage sailing while they uh, lived on the uh, Oregon coast and they'd come to these garage sales and say, oh, there's some basketball digests. We better get those. And they probably got, you know, these ones with Kareem and Walt Frazier and Dr. J. They probably got, six, you know, eight or ten of those things for a dollar fifty or something like that, if that. They were always bargain hunting uh, for me, and I always appreciated that. So anyway, uh, I not only had basketball digest issues, I was a fan of the Cincinnati Reds in the uh, 1970s. I, I remained pretty loyal to them despite some rough decades uh, and, and some good decades in between. Uh, the Big Red Machine obviously had a nice uh, decade of the 1970s, but I also had a few uh, from those same garage sales there's Peter Edward Rose. Yeah, he's banned from the game, but boy, he played his tail off on the field. He was always fun to watch, whether it was the big red machine in the 70s or in the 1980s when he actually managed the Reds and, and put him into second place like four years in a row before things went a little cockeyed and downhill. So there's a beautiful shot of Joe Morgan. I mean, there's not a guy on that team you couldn't love. I guess you could if you're the opposition. So it's probably the reason I'm not a humongous Dodgers fan. Even though I went to see the Los Angeles Dodgers and Seattle Mariners last Friday and, and the Mariners got their tails swept three games to none. Uh, I drove uh, from Portland to Seattle. It's about a three-hour run and uh, had a great time with the group that I call the Baseball Bunch. But the, the Mariners uh, prevailed. I, I only went to one of the three games they... they uh, Mostly Dodger and Mariner fans uh, went to all three and uh, had a fun time. Great weather at T-Mobile Park. But anyway, getting back to my topic here, these, these magazines were just a fun thing to do. 
uh, as a hobby, uh, looking at the stats at the back of the magazines. And I'm going to refer to one right here that I didn't, did not even put out. This is a Carl Malone issue from January of 1988. They always have the rosters at the back. They have the all-time league leaders, you know, who led the league in assists in 1946-47. Of course, it was Ernie Cavalry. And, you know, he had all of 202 assists in, I think, about 60 games. But, uh, you know, they always had the stats. That's how I memorized my stats over time, partially, besides tabletop games. But uh, just some great, oh, the 10 worst teams of all time issue. That's, um, that's, that's a little bit overrated in this magazine. So if you're thinking of picking up January of 1988 Basketball Digest, almost over half of those teams in that article are expansion teams. I don't think that gives a, a fair shake to those teams, whether it's the expansion Cavaliers from 1970-71 or the Dallas, you know, this is before the Dallas. No, this does include the Dallas Mavericks of 80-81, another 15-game win team, you know. There are the 19, 9 and 73 76ers of 1973 but it's just fun to read these articles and just go back in time you know and and see the superstars on the cover including Dantley over there Daryl Dawkins you know Daryl Griffith of course Marcus Johnson Walter Davis Bernard King Julia Serving that is a stacked uh, uh, view of some of the great forwards of the 19 early 1980s to mid a little few 1970s guys one article I was going to just point out uh, it was just a unique article, and that's why I've got to make it. They always had their little notes, news, and comments. This was kind of the gossip around the NBA. I always loved this. And this is after the 1986-87 season, so uh, even though it's 1988, they're still referring to the season before. There was an author in here. Uh, I never heard of this book. I haven't read every issue. I'll be honest. I would look at some of the stats and things and sometimes not get to some of the articles and i've been reading some in the last couple weeks uh in a new book basketball heaven 1987-88 author martin manley takes a unique look at basketball through statistics statistics and more statistics it's basketball's answer to the bill james baseball abstract now if you've ever had the bill james baseball astra abstract you know that he uh found intuitive ways to come up uh ways of regenerating st statistics making up your own ratings and st statistics as in baseball's war or all these other made up ones that i really don't care too much about to this day but uh, the one thing that he had done if you look at the graphic down here uh, after spending hours and hours timing every player over and over, Manley constructed a list of the 10 fastest and 10 slowest at the free throw line. So uh, in 1986-87, to make a long story short, Manu Bull was the quickest at the foul line, taking a free throw every one, only taking 1 1.88 seconds from the time he received the ball to shoot in the free throw. And, of course, Moses Malone, 3.01, Alvin Robertson, 3.01, Craig Elo, 3.2. And it just goes on and on. So the, the guys who took the shortest amount of time, uh, you know, some of them shot, most of them shot reasonably well from the line. You don't have to rush your free throws, but that was their quicker routine. I had to look up Sleepy Floyd the night. He scored 51 points on the Lakers in the playoffs. And I looked at his free throw, and sure enough, he took... You know, one or two quick dribbles and shot the ball very quickly. On the other hand, there are t human rain delays at the free throw line, and I would, did not really realize that Roddy McRae uh, took 11.3 seconds on average to shoot a free throw. Adrian Dantley, well known. He massaged the ball, took a long, long time at the line, and 10.28 seconds. Um, you know, other guys that I kind of knew. And Jack Sigma was awfully slow, almost 10 seconds. As most people know, you only get 10 seconds to shoot, typically at the foul line. But the d thing about it was, particularly in the 1980s, no one ever called you on it. So Roddy McRae, 93.3% of the time took over 10 seconds to shoot his free throws. That is just amazing. So anyway, you know, even Dennis Johnson took his own sweet time. Barkley, 
You know, they, maybe you think it through too much. I mean, Barkley still hit over 70% from the free, 78% from the line. That was probably one of his better years. So um, not too many bad foul shooters on this list, but I just found that article intriguing and fascinating. But uh, that is the world of Basketball Digest. I mean, it's those games I never forget, the feature articles, the predictions for the new season, they were just fantastic. So I pretty much kept as many of those as I could as a child. Mom didn't get to throw them in the trash. My mom wasn't that type of person. She would always save stuff that she knew we liked. So anyway, that is Basketball Digest in a nutshell. Look at all these issues. I, I love the classic ones, you know, just Nate the Great Thurman right there. That is just fantastic. Bill Walton. 1975 February he got up to a slow start in his career before leading the Walton the the Blazers the Walton gang <laughs> that probably refers to UCLA but leading him to the promised land but uh, anyway my favorite player as many know is Rick Barry and of course this this is Rick Barry just uh, going into the 1975 finals the man with the golden gun it doesn't you know this is before they actually won the championship and this is this is vintage barry make having the finest uh, season as a mature ball player in 1975 he won the scoring title in 67 and went to the finals but this was probably the best all around rick barry he was a little heavier a little stronger maybe not as fast but his shooting range was bigger and he led a pretty nondescript Golden State Warriors team to the NBA Finals where they somehow upset the Washington Bullets. I'm going to have to replay that series. I also played a partial season of Barry back in the day. I'm probably about 28 games in. And maybe I'll have to complete that Warriors of 75 because they're just so unusual. And having Rick as the center of attention there, that's always a blast with fast break. I could also do it with Hoops 67, maybe play that 35.6 guy that was uh, quite a player. But anyway, let's get on to our topic of the day. Alrighty. Well, as most people know, uh, the last few episodes of this channel, I've been t kind of uh, looking at a game that is new in 2023. I've probably talked about it five, six episodes this uh, spring, summer. Very interested in a game of that nature. And, uh, here it is, uh, as you can see by this bo big old box. Um, if you can't read the title, if I bring it closer, maybe you can, maybe you can't. But anyway, let's break open this puppy and see what we've got. I'm pretty sure most people know what it is, but let's see what's under the hood. All right, we're back. I did kind of the magic of film and photography and fast forwarded the uh, typical struggle i'd have to open that box got myself a little box cutting knife and uh, we are at the point where we can see what's inside the box far more easily well looks like we got some free air pillows and there's another free air pillow and another free air pillow So, Joe Bryan and team boxed up a set of bank shot basketball. Now, I had been kind of waiting to see for a couple months just to see what Joe was doing with the uh, number of fast action cards per quarter and what seasons of cards he was offering. I hadn't found a really good NBA seasons of cards and I'm gonna be up front with this one I was just waiting for something different basically because he had the 1961-62 season available still does 1984-85 uh, 1995-96 uh, oh, the current season of cards and it wasn't until I saw the fact he put out a college uh, set set number one that I said you know what that's worth taking a look at and just a note to Joe, I just like, if you come up with something like 71-72 NBA or 
81, 82 NBA. Those are in my wheelhouse. I really would not mind seeing a season like that. So just, you know, put a planting a little seed in your mind. Appreciate all your work on these cards, but I know you're in the infancy of putting out past seasons, and that's what's always exciting. I, I have no doubt that you're going to fulfill the game player's dream with some more classic seasons. We, you know, most of us are uh, a little bit on the older side, and they really, we really appreciate all the work on classic years, whether they are college and or pro. So, as I described in a previous video, uh, the first college set's got a variety. It's got a variety of teams ranging from Pistol Pete Maravich's 1970 team to Bill Walton's 72 UCLA to uh, modern teams like Gonzaga and Baylor of 2021. But anyway, without further ado, let's take a look at this game called Bank Shot. Well, as you know, I am always a fan of game boxes, and Bank Shot bas Basketball is a perfect game box. It is not... Uh, too shiny. I love that for video of things. I don't want to see a, my light flash off the box when I get to display it for my favorite fans out there, you guys. So uh, a very good looking box. Let's take a look how thick it is. Pretty darn thick, but solid as a rock. I think there's a lot of fans out there that played SSG uh, basketball also created by Joe, and uh, I think the box was somewhat similar to this, but obviously not the same game. So, and I find that remarkable. I, I find a, a person who's actually created their own basketball game uh, goes back into the think tank thinking, I can do something different and innovative and create a second game. I know there's plenty of people that still love SSG, and I think he still puts seasons of that together. But to come out with something new for 2023, I think his timing is really good. I think the basketball fan is always looking for something new, the new and improved product, and maybe Bank Shot touches on that. But I'm going to find out with a, some game plays uh, in future videos. But today, we're going to focus on Bank Shot Basketball. I'm really pleased with the box construction. So let's take a look what's inside the box. And just flops out there like that. And let's see what's in here. Chunk. There's the big chunk. And I got this for Keith Hughes, Linwood Robinson, and Eric Griffin of Southern Illinois. I was very intrigued by his grouping of uh, college basketball teams. Uh, I really would never have known much about 87 Syracuse or uh, what do we got? Uh, North Carolina's Linwood Robinson, 80, of course, 82 North Carolina. Who doesn't know Michael Jordan or Sam Perkins, uh, you know, James Worthy, those type of guys. But uh, and uh, Eric Griffin of Southern Illinois. I think some of the teams were kind of mediocre. So, I mean, unlike other uh, sets of college basketball uh, game cards. I'm I'm mostly referring to what I know as PTG. I'm not a big college basketball game player. Uh, those are typical. Those from the 1960s and 1970s were uh, chock full of top 20 ball clubs or top 20 independent teams as well, uh, issued in groups of 20 or 30. Well, you're always facing the great teams every single time, which is good in some ways. But I think Joe, he's intentionally decided to come up with a couple teams that were kind of mediocre, weren't just like the greatest teams on uh, around. So you can actually, you know, you can have a game where UCLA faces off, say, against Southern Illinois or something like that, and you can really see how UCLA used to power past a team of that nature. So we'll see how that goes. But look at this brick, this brick of cards. There's three stacks, and uh, that's 30 teams, I do declare, and I'm going to have to break those out. But they're all um, pre-cut. There's no nothing 
you know, I paid big bucks for this brick of cards and the whole box. I think I paid $82 because of the $19 shipping fee, but there's no way right now that I really want to go and uh, get the PDF for a, a fraction of the cost. It is much cheaper, but this would have been a lot of work. This is just a ton of cards. doesn't look like it on the surface, but that is uh, exactly what I expected. They look like they're in good condition. I'll break out a few in a few minutes. What else do we got? Of course, the dreaded uh, fast break deck. Now, there's a fast break deck, and there's an action deck of cards, and they're pretty thick, pretty darn thick cards, and uh, they look really nice. And that, once again, if I got the PDF of this game, I would have to print out every one of these, and look how they're two-sided with color on one side and the game card on the other side. And that's what your game cards look like. This is for possession. And this is uh, special readings for question marks, fast breaks, a dice percentage, 1 to 100%, of course, a D6 if you need it, a 2D6 reading if you need that too. There's also an uh, injury rating if you get an injury, remainder of the game plus injury. Um, this is the equivalent, I would say, to Jim Mickey's tip chart. Injuries, technical fouls. That kind of thing. Uh, they're built into the cards, though, and not on a separate chart. That kind of appeals to me. Um, this will also be the first game that I will not, at least not right off the bat, utilize dice. I'm probably going to just use a card, uh, much like a status pro version. Just do cards only for now, just to see how it works. And I, I typically used a card combination with dice, which you can still do with this, obviously grab your own 2d6s or do your own uh two 10 sided dice type of thing but uh anyway this will be an interesting experiment the two dice two card decks uh in addition uh to the cards themselves and a game board which we'll get into into that in a second i've never utilized that i know he used that for ssg and i never played a game of ssg basketball so this will be a new experience for me and that's another reason i picked up this game All right, I've unpacked the box a little bit more for quick viewing. Uh, of course, you get this little baggie in Joe Bryan's bank shop basketball. And I think you put these little marker cards in between your action deck of cards. That keeps track of the minutes. You got a one-minute marker, two, three, four, five. So looks like you can do... If you wanted to do the last six minutes of a quarter, I guess, or or however you want to do that, I'll have to read the instructions, the old minute, the marker cards, which is what a lot of people have done with, um, you know, Stratomatic in the past. You put minute marker cards in between. You know, I could always make up my own time clock if I'm really not doing it. I do keep track of minutes in almost all of my games. So uh, that's possibly what I could do there, too. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of possibilities, but I'm going to try uh, Joe's method first using some, probably some minute marker cards or something different uh, to keep track of time in, in a game. Of course, we have a measured number of cards. Once that me measured number of cards runs out, uh, you finished a quarter, I believe. So, And it's either 36, 39, or 42 cards, depending on what team you're playing. So that's what that's going to be. I love this this deck because it's got an un, to me an unlimited number of cards for random number numbers, you know. So maybe no dice will be good, but of course you're given dice as well. So here's your oh here's some two beautiful two beautiful D tens. So you can utilize that, and you know you can have ten right there, twenty three, fifty one. Yeah, I'd be making free throws right there. Uh, there's also some regular two dice there, and these are fairly fairly good size so i really appreciate joe so i can do a couple games uh, if i decide to go with dice sometimes that always feels better it's just kind of fun fun to do those things so that's great uh in addition of course as you can see a little glary look at the glare on that that's a shiny board but anyway this is your typical five on five um playing court surface Got the nice little bank shot logo in the corner right there. Uh, but anyway, you got G2, G1, C, F1, F2, 
That's very similar to what uh, Status Pro had back in the day. Uh, My early version has that same type of format. So that should not be too difficult to deal with. Of course, what uh, has gotten a little buzz this summer was the uh, multiplayer board where you can put 10 guys per team on the board. I'm trying to keep the glare down here. But uh, anyway, as you can see, the away teams up here, G1, G2, Center 1, F1, F2 away. But there's also a G3 and a G4. And I'm still trying to read this board. There's, that's the away team. Here's the home team. Down here, the away team has a C2, C3, C4. So it looks like you can go with three, seven, ten guys per team technically uh, capable of popping into the game at any time. There's certain cards in the action deck that will allow uh, players that come off the bench to shoot. So some people are uh, over the decades of, are tired of making substitutions. This was an innovative way to play all the players at the same time. Uh, I typically go with the traditional style Putting in subs as I feel necessary, but at the same time, I think I've got to give this one a shot just to see what it does, and maybe I'll play a half a ball and say that's that's not so good, it's not feeling right, uh, but then maybe again, I, maybe I won't. Of course, right now, as you know, I've got um, college basketball guys, and uh, so these these players uh they're typically the substitutions the depth on a lot of these college teams isn't that great i probably don't need to make that many sub substitutions per game unlike if i was playing an nba game as well so you know you got got two ways to look at that but anyway this is this is all the cards you get those are the boards you get of course you wouldn't be able to play the game without at least a quick start guide and this is the quick start guide talks about the action deck talks about the start of a possession so you could probably uh go through a a quick you know down and dirty quick start uh guide here and play some basketball right off the bat um of course uh, the deck is different for college versus pro i got to remember to do that and each half is 20 minutes which is pretty obvious but um it basically shows you exactly what you do for college and or professional basketball games so there's there's that quick start guide what else do we got here oh the college instructions are right here so you can um you can see g with the highest assist rating should be placed at the g the guard with the highest assist rating should be placed in the g1 position uh forward the highest defensive rebound rating should be in the f1 position so that's pretty easy to remember if two centers are in the game the one with the highest defensive rebound rating should be placed in the center rebound position and the other in the f1 position there are three guards in the game the one with the highest assist rating should be g1 so uh, the magic johnson types will be the first ones there so matching teams from different areas it talks about uh first is there are any three-point ranges and you only use the two-point shots for the game if you have a team that did not shoot the three versus one that did uh section op- second option is to use the team's three-point ranges for both both teams uh when the team without the three-point range rolls a basket or missed result refer to the def- defenders offense ratings and use the defenders three-point ranges behind his basket and missed results to determine if the shot was a two-point or three-point shot now they lost me a little bit there but i have not played enough of the game i've watched quite a bit of this being played so uh it's probably pretty simple but uh, that's a way to introduce that three-point shot to both the offense and the defense so got even more here oh is there not just one side on the college instructions. I do like that. I don't think this this instruction book's overly huge. We're going to find out in a second. I'm going to pull this away. My arm's getting a little heavy with a uh, the few score sheets they gave us here. This looks like there's maybe ten or so. Oh, they're two sided. So you got two sided score sheets. And if you can't read those, what do we got here? We've got uh, way team. Minutes played, field goals, free throws, rebounds, assists, 
steals, blocks, turnovers, fouls, and points. So they try to cover all of the numbers in here. And, uh, yeah, good set of score sheets to get you started. Obviously, you want to save a couple of those so you can copy them off and continue to play with that score sheet if that's the score sheet you choose to use. What else do we have here? Uh, this is the big booklet, I believe. This is the money uh, that you're looking for, the Bank Shot Basketball Sideline Strategy Games, copyright 2023. Uh, four types of cards that are the heart of Bank Shot Basketball. And, of course, we know there's a player card. There's a team uh, card, which determines uh, pace and fast break ratings. And you can see what the team's record was and all of that jazz. Uh, there's also the obvious action cards with have the uh, possession starts right there at g1 versus defender and because the defender is shaded with pink you utilize the defender's card for that particular play and that's very simple and very uh, uh, you know hopefully this will be a smooth flowing game for me i am just speaking out of the side of my head right now because i have yet to play a game of this so uh then of course the fast break card which gives you uh if you get determined to get i believe a fast break off of the action card then you start using the fast break card and also as the injuries the jump balls the technical fouls uh you know things of that nature is of course the automated dice rolls d6 2d6 and percentage of the dice so what else do we got uh he just starts talking about every card. There's the Luka Doncic card for Dallas. How is Dallas going to be this year? I mean, that is a team, as, as much as I have not been buying a lot of new seasons, I look at that team and they picked up Kyrie Irving last year. They went from a, a playoff team, you know, a dozen games over 500 and just missed the playoffs entirely. I, I don't know what the, the story is. Kyrie is a little bit of a head case in my opinion, but maybe one of the most... Uh, one of the most talented players I've probably ever seen from that guard position. I I wish he didn't have a two cent head, but uh, Kyrie is going to be the person that's the uh, straw that stirs the proverbial drink in Dallas. Because I think uh, Mark Cuban uh, decided I'm going to try and get the most talent I can. Kyrie was sticking his neck out there, but just like with many of his other teams, uh, he did not blend in as well as they expected with Dallas. But that's one of the intriguing stories. Can Jason Kidd get the Dallas Mavericks? Is it still Jason Kidd there? Get the Dallas Mavericks playing decent basketball this coming season, which is coming up and feels like i think just over a month but uh it's not too far around there's a uh, game set up how to play begin play by turning over the top card of the fast break deck and refer to the jump ball so use the fast break deck for the jump ball i gotta remember that this will indicate if the away or home team won the opening tip so it sounds like it's a little little bit random probably shaded toward the home team so uh other games uh jim mickey's fast break always had a little jump ball rating for each uh big man who played center and or other games would say the best rebounder you know uh best offensive rebounder i think that was hoops method giving uh one player an advantage this game is just going to say hey uh you know you got that 50 50 ball <laughs> it's going to be one or the other because those players are quick and are there really centers in the nba these days besides uh uh Embiid in philadelphia there and 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 uh, obviously in um nikola Jokic in denver there's really not a ton of centers i th think most players are kind of interchangeable so and all of them can leap out of a building so uh that's not that big a deal uh let's see what else we have we got rebounds when a shot is missed, three point, two point, free throw, turn over the next action card, refer to the rebound action of the card. That sounds easy. Free throws, there's a free free throw column. Well, I was just reading up on the free throws. I had to unpack a couple of cards here. <laughs> And uh, I wanted to know how to shoot free throws. They're showing me the dice-operated way to do that. When a player attempts a free throw, roll all four dice and refer to the offense section. Find the range with the percentage dice result and look to the left of the range under the free throw column heading. If G is listed, the free throw was good. If there is a blank space, the free throw was missed. If there is a number or range of numbers, refer to the 2D6 result. 
If the dice result equals the number or is included in the range listed, the free throw is good. The free throw is missed when the dice result does not equal the number or is not included in the range of numbers. In the last, If the last free throw shot was missed, refer to the rebound section of the next action card. Now, I decided to take a look at these cards really quick, and I thought Leonard Robinson, uh, North Carolina, whoa, he's only good one, to, zero to 12 uh, is good, looks like 13 to 40, uh, you roll a three to five, it must be, it must be these two dice here that the three to five is, I'm guessing. Um, I'll try to do it with both uh, versions. But anyway, I thought, well, you got Leonard Robert Robinson here. Will I have another North Carolina below? No, I've got Chris Mullen. Well, maybe it's all St. John's below this. Nope. It's Bill Newton of LSU, who I've actually played, I believe, with PTG Basketball 1970 LSU with Pistol Pete. But uh, so there's going to be some sorting involved here. That's just my long story short. Uh, we got uh, we, we lucked out. I found the middle pack and Magic Johnson of Michigan State. Let's shoot a couple free throws with Magic. Let's see. Well, let's clear a space so this can be red. It said something about rolling all four dice, so I rolled a 75 on Magic, and it looks like that is a, uh, let's see if you look at his card, um, it looks like 73 to 99 is a 3 to 6 perhaps, and luckily I rolled on the two dice down here, if you can see it, um, I rolled a 5. So if I rolled a five, if did I do that right? Um, it's looks like I made that free throw. Let's do another free throw for Madge. Irvin. So I roll a 23, and obviously the 23 has a G right next to it, so it's good. It's similar to going to the old fast break deck, I guess, and you roll a 40%. And I guess that is a 2D6. I can't remember. Um... Yeah, it has to be the 2d6 because you have to roll a 4. So anyway, we rolled a 40% on that, and that's obviously good. There's an 88, and then you would have to check for the 3 to 6, and obviously the 2d6 is 9, so that would be a missed free throw by Magic. Anyway, just one aspect of the game. I had to try out Magic Johnson. Let's take a look at the cards while we're looking at cards. Um, Bill Newton. And we had Christopher Bruss, Walter Berry, who actually ended up in Portland. We thought he was a great pick as the player of the year with St. John's, but he turned out to be a little one-dimensional, a uh, little bit of an attitude. He ended up going to San Antonio, New Jersey, having a much shorter pro career. But that's sophomore, uh, I believe, sophomore Walter Berry. I do like the fact that they have the year, whether they're a sophomore, junior, or senior. I played a lot of the... Uh, PTG basketball ones and has very little uh, talk about the player himself. So this says St. John's, this says 6 8 forward. Um, yeah, that's their shooting ranges and everything. Milt Wagner, Danny Mann in Kansas, PJ Bowman, Illinois. There's going to be also a lot of players that you won't know because of the, you know, sixth, seventh, eighth men on some of these teams, unless you went to one of these universities or just followed these teams very Closely, Kit Mueller, Princeton, you know, don't know a ton about that guy. So, but he obviously played significant min minutes. There's Thomas Hill of Duke. I remember Grant Hill, and Thomas Hill was also a key member of those 92 Duke Blue Devils who were virtually a perfect team with uh, Christian Leitner. There's Travis Ford, Kentucky, also 92, so you can play them back uh, against each other. Uh, 92, Keith Brooks. Tracy Webster, Yakim Noah, those darn Florida teams. They win back-to-back -back titles. That's pretty impressive. Uh, Colin Gillespie, Ben Gregg. Oh, yeah, Ben Gregg. He's still playing for Gonzaga. He came on as a 17-year-old. It was during the COVID year, and he was able to graduate from his high school in Clackamas, Oregon. I always, when my wife and I watched Gonzaga, we always call him Clackamas because Clackamas is a little suburb of Portland. We're in Gresham, just kind of north of that. So, but Ben's been improving. I think he might have one more year left, maybe two, due to the COVID restrictions. But a solid player, but 
nothing uh nothing spectacular carson barrett mike masucci chris harrison of 92 kentucky and there's a ucla team card now what i've heard you can actually play the game in a shorter version just playing off the UCLA's team card. So that's probably a team free throw percentage, a team offensive range here, a team defensive range down here. 2004 Connecticut, obviously another very good team. But before I get back into the cards, let's take a look a little bit longer in the instruction booklet. It talks about fast breaks may occur from either a rebound or a steal. Well, that's kind of cool. Just get the steal and run the fast break on the rebound results. I think on some of these cards, uh, fast break deck, is that for rebounds? No. <laughs> rebounds are on the action deck. I'm still learning. Uh, see, there's a defensive F1 grabs the rebound, fast break. And I can't remember if you look at this one for fast break. And it says foul while shooting F1. So, yeah, is that a f I think that's how it works. He grabs the rebound, starts the fast break, and the F1 fouls the other F1. I got to read up on that. <laughs> but anyway, these cards are kind of cool. I was going to make a quick note about the quality of the cards. They seem very solid. Can you shuffle these if you need to? I think I think that's doable. They're, they're pretty darn... Uh, I'm not a great shuffler, but anyway, just to demonstrate, they're, they're shuffleable, folks. They will work. But they, they're just nice two-sided cards with some, uh, you know, one-sided card with basically bank shot on the back. A lot of other games do uh, two-sided cards, so you don't have to, you know, you can just use the back of another card. You flip like in um, hoops, tabletop basketball, and replay basketball. But anyway, uh, and I've been looking at the replay game. I did get a lot of uh, positive sentiment about that. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, replay it looks like a pretty fun game the issue i have is the lack of classic seasons in it so anyway that's another topic for discussion that seems like a good game but they have been around 20 years and they don't really fill up the uh, 1970s 80s 90s uh, schedule of seasons like i'd prefer and i think bank shot's going to do a better job of it so i'm going to stick with these guys for now but then as you can see, the cards are pretty good, durable. They kind of randomize, you know, center versus, on offense versus defender. You know, if that's Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, you're going to see some basketball. Uh, this college set has Walton, as I recall. They do not have a Jabbar uh, link team. Maybe set two uh, will have it. The other uh, thing I've seen in dirt, different circles, uh, Facebook or Delphi forums, is the uh, the the college set one has, of course, Michigan State. Well, you know, where are the Indiana State Sycamores of Larry Bird to play against him? Uh, I'm hoping that uh, set two, they'll make us have to buy another set to have that matchup, but that may have been just the slightest oversight by Joe. I think he knows that. But anyway, minor thing. We're going to have some fun with this. It's a beautiful set of cards. That's what all your possession cards look like. Once again, they're just solid. They're solidly constructed these will last a long time. Um, there's crazy people that actually put a plastic penny sleeve around every single card and play that way to make them last forever. Personally, I wouldn't even touch that because this, this deck would be like almost twice the thickness if you did that. I think you can maybe do that if you like with some of the player cards, but it's a modern day game. There's just uh, I just would rather wash my hands and have clean cards every single game rather than put a little sleeve around each one it's not the uh it's, i've just never been a bit huge fan of that but uh looking at some of these cards it looks like there's a whole bunch of you know those question mark readings minor injury reduced players minutes played by six for the remainder of this game i think that's a pretty good reading i don't i don't like games that just say must come out for 12 minutes every time i i do like ones that you know that say you know you know minor injury versus a major where you might miss the entire rest of the game next possession double foul called give foul to each player see i've never had a game that had a double foul in it so you got kind of interesting stuff player suffers injury check injury result on next card uh here's another question mark and waitering team turns ball over on next two possessions now that's a unique one that's kind of interesting in itself uh no event continue game as normal that's a nice there's another one there's another one so there's a few of those 
the question mark, you know, uh, Jim Mickey's fast break always had a tip chart where there was a injury that occurred. But if you roll a four or seven player recovers within 20 second injury timeout, it's always just kind of a relief. You know? <laughs> no one likes to see some of their better players go down. And of course, you being the coach and the manager of the game, you could always just say, I'm playing with no injuries this game, you know, just make it fun to your taste. Uh, back to the instructions, we've got a player card explanation. Assist player makes an excellent play to a teammate um, who makes an easy basket. Credit the player with an assist. And that's one of my favorite features of any good tabletop game. Um, let's take a look and see. Does Magic have any assists? I think I've talked about this before. Magic has a 30 to 46 assist on offense, so he can reward a player on uh, his offensive side. I think um, Magic played with Greg Kelser, was another high-flying forward. In addition, let's see, let's just take a look at a few more cards here. I'm just trying to see if I can, ugh, these cards are kind of sticking together on me. There's Nick Anderson, played on the Orlando Magic. Can he make free throws? He's okay. I don't think he's great. If he's 32 to 58 basket, 59 to 99 miss, but it's 10 to 12. So maybe he was better in college. He had some uh, mental issues at the foul line, to say the least. Oh, that's the, is that the Con Dale Brown 92 Kentucky? Yeah, there's, there's, let's see if we can find another popular guy. So there's going to be a lot of guys that you're not going to remember who they were, but then they may come through in one of these games. Look at the Damir Cosby Roundtree. I don't know much about him. 2018 Villanova. Uh, Joel Ayayi, he got drafted by the G League uh, Lakers. I don't think he, he came out a year too early, I think, with Gonzaga. I'm kind of a Gonzaga expert. Uh, not the David Robinson, a David Robinson for the 86 Louisville Cardinals. So there's going to be a lot of... Uh, Plays. Uh, it's one of the teams like Prairie View. Really? Prairie View? <laughs> I don't really know much about Prairie View. Oh, there's a 72 UCLA uh, fast break offense A. So they're going to do some serious damage there. They were 30 and 2, scored 94 points a game, gave up 64 points. I've got to play that team soon. That is going to be a heck of a team. What's that? Do we just get a little blank card? Is that halfway through the deck? I, I don't see... Oh, there's Mark Jackson. Mark Action Jackson. Look at that. That's fantastic. So he's got an assist 70-89, so he's obviously a point guard. There's DC Derek Coleman, Syracuse. All right. Marcus Liberty, much better college player than NBA player. So that's also... That's what I got this for. Just some guys that were actually great college guys. I'm not a huge college fan other than Gonzaga. And there's Julian Strother of Gonzaga. Good player. Good player. Yeah, he got drafted by Denver. I can't remember. Scott Hess at Houston. Georgetown team card. So this is 84, obviously, just before uh, Patrick Ewing went to the draft. So that'll be interesting. Baylor, a fantastic Baylor team. Killed Gonzaga. There's the double-A offense for 2018 Villanova. Another little blank card there. So Greg Lee. Played with uh, UCLA with Bill Walton. So that's kind of fun, too. Anything else in here that I want to take a look at? Let's see. Talks about the, the assist. I'll have to look at that. How to score a basket with the age of the three-point line. I think there's a lot of checks between whether he shot a two-point shot or a three-point shot in here. Da, da, da. Oh, their fouling mechanism. Hopefully they're pretty accurate. The heavy foulers will foul, and the non-foulers will stay out of foul trouble. So foul while shooting. Yeah, that's the one thing I remember on these cards. Let's see if I can find one more. Oh, Damon Bailey. Another good college player. Didn't do anything in the pros. But uh, anyway, this is your, your shooting line. I can't think. That's your three-point field goal attempt, two-point field goal attempt, three-pointer made, two-pointer made. 34 games, 24 started, 27 minutes a game. That's a really unique innovation to have that little extra line. I can't remember if SSG had something similar, but uh, that kind of shows you what, what's going on with the field goal attempt. You get fouled in the act of shooting, like you, roll, you get a 20 to 30, and then 
the action, much like a status pro thing. Does the ball reach the basket or does it not? You know, is it is it good or no good? So that'll be interesting in itself. Let's see if we can find another player that uh, Matt Schnatterbeck, Jason Beisch. There's 87 Syracuse, 2023 Purdue, 86 Louisville, Jamal Wilkes. And Joe Ryan didn't realize his name was Keith Wilkes until about 1975, 76 season of the NBA. But Jamal, we all know Jamal, Jamal Keith Wilkes. I'll be calling him Keith when I play the UCLA Bruins of 1972. Larry Farmer, most know him as a coach, but he was also a powerful six foot five forward for those 72 um, UCLA Bruins. I read a book called The Walton Gang, and it's talking to a 19 year old Bill Walton. Very interesting book. Uh, Pistol Pete, there we go. This is this going to give us 44.5 points per game? We'll have to check that out. There was no three pointer back then. Uh, this will be a very interesting card. He obviously he's got the B uh, with a star by it, and that's a possession uh, rating there as a senior. And I think that just means he gets the card as much as possible. Gets the card, gets the ball in his possession as much as possible. Does he pass the ball well? Uh, basket. Uh, oh, there's the assist, forty three to forty eight. That's probably not too bad, but I think uh, he's in the. His dad just says, "Keep shooting, pistol." What else do we got here? We got Kenny Battle, Tony Walker, Chris Mooney, Grant Hill. There's a player right there. I don't know how good some of these guys are defensively or rebound-wise. There's just all kinds of Jaleel Roberts, Adrian Moss. What do we have? Oh, we guess have just a smorgasbord of players that will all have to be sorted. Anyway, there's... A uh, basket player makes a three-point field goal attempt. Uh, a field goal attempt. Then we got foul well shooting, as I said before. Let's get to the back. We got stuff about misses, turnovers, block shots, ball handler, uh, the heave section. I I guess that's a last-second heave at the end of the quarter. I knew that heave rating must have been something something special. Where's that heave rating? Only I think only certain guys. I thought, can you heave the ball? I don't know. There it is. It says Chris Mar Chase Martin, heave 2.9. There's something to do with that heave rating. I will have to read up on that. That could be kind of fun as well. Sco who gets the basket on the assist? Fast break explanation. Yeah, one thing I see on this game, the uh, obviously a fast break deck is going to have fast break results on it. Uh, like right there. Uh, F. B to E, turnover F1. Um, replay basketball. I kept looking at its fast break system. I think the, the fast break system is kind of messed up. They've kind of got this, uh, you know, combined rating between the, what the offense brings to one team and the defensive fast break brings to the other team. And there's this chart, which is just kind of convoluted. Uh, very interesting. Look, I kept seeing game players play, and it just seems like they get... The fast break is like the slowest fast break you're ever going to see. So I don't like to criticize games too much, but that that fast break system is going to be way inferior than fast break pro basketball, hoops tabletop pro basketball, and probably this one because you can actually see what the results are going to be. And this one, in this case, it was just held up. And of course, in this case, foul while shooting F1. So I'm looking forward to a good fast break with bank shot basketball. Uh, other things, intentional fouls. These are just strategies. Pressing, playing safe so you don't foul out too soon. Timeouts, uh, rest. I kind of ignore rest. I don't care. I'm going to play guys with that within a reasonable range of their minutes. And maybe Bill Walton will play 40 minutes one game and 30 the other. So he averages 35 minutes a game with with UCLA. Who knows? You know. But I I really just like to stay reasonably close. These are college kids. They could run for days. And you got, there's the team player cards. What is the story with the team player cards anyway? Another way to play a quicker version of bank shot basketball is to use the team cards. These cards look exactly like the player cards and both an offense with both an offense and defense section. There are no individual player cards players used, other than the team cards take place of all the players. 
gameplay is the same with all results coming from the offense and defense sections of the team player cards. So, in a nutshell, if you want to do a game where you don't have to make substitutions, there's a Charlotte Hornets sample of a team player card, and I showed you other ones as well. But anyway, that is the instructions. That is bank shot basketball. I can't wait to dig into this a little bit more. I've obviously got some card sorting to do. I don't know. Do I need to make packets for each one of these individual guys? They'd sure look nice. That's a fact. But anyway, this has been Rod's Tabletop Hoops, and uh, I'm looking forward to playing a sample game of bank shot basketball. I hope you enjoy this little uh, unboxing, if you will, of this game. It looks like it's going to be a lot of fun, and I've got a lot of things to read up on, but I think uh, it's pretty pick up and play for the most part. Anyway, this is Rod Hess signing off with Rod's Tabletop Hoops. Have a good week, everyone.